Hey, what's up everybody? I'm the gerbil, and this is the third time I've hit record, so I'm taking it easy this time and not trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. But the reality is I do know what I'm talking about. This is uh, an Ewok modding guide video. If you're here, it's because you recognize you've probably modded your Ewoks wrong, as have most of us out there. And I'm gonna try in this video to go a little bit in depth on the core five plus one of the eight Ewoks, explaining what modding works and why you want it. And we're gonna look very briefly at their kits, and I'm gonna share with you this graphic right over here you can see uh, it's on my discord I'll share that link also it's in the comments discussion description down below and in the video in a moment but let's dive into it shall we so if you're wondering why he walks again because you need three of them for uh, for General Leia. You need Nisa at R7, Chirpa and Wicket Relic 3. Your guild is gonna ask somebody to take Logre, I think a couple Logres up to R8, which means you only need one more. And if I'm not mistaken, Poplu is needed, though I don't recommend him. I would highly suggest you throw in Ewok Elder instead of Poplu for reasons that we'll get into in a moment. But if you're going to go this route, then you already have four of five required relic Ewoks. Might as well throw in one more and get some real utility out of them. And yes, if you mod them right, you can get some substantial utility out of them. Especially as of right now, October 2023, the general uh, GL Leia speeder bike race raid is about to start and that will require Ewoks, you can use all eight of them. And remember, you only need three for that event, so um, you could make two full Ewok squads out of it. We don't know what that's gonna look like yet, but I suspect they'll be decent. Um, further, there is a Datacron out there for Nisa, the Nisacron. If you're using that right now, you are probably whipping up on some poor folks. I have heard so many top 100 people struggling against the Ewok Nisocron. It is beating out Nest, it is beating out General, uh, no, Jedi Master Luke, and then people are using it to beat Lord Vader and a few other people. That is not an exaggeration. Um, it is a thing. So, how shall we mod our lovely murder bears? First and foremost, if you're following SWGOH.GG community average, it's not a recommendation. It is they will tell you what other people are doing. The top 100 guilds are modding their Ewoks completely wrong. So I've crossed out everything in red here. And you can see that most of that is protection. Protection is unequivocally, hands down, 100% flat wrong. Do not put protection mods on your Ewoks. Next up, for whatever reason, I, I cannot fathom if you have read the kit at least once, more than once likely on Nisa, you would understand that critical chance is 100% a bad idea to put on her. Yeah, she's got bonuses that trigger with critical hits, but she's also gonna start in Territory Wars, if you have the Omicron, at 193% critical chance before you even add a critical chance mod to her. So let's look, if these are wrong, what do you want? Well, first off, we need to understand turn order. If you're gonna run a squad with Poplu, you generally want Poplu to be your fastest. Despite him being a tank, you actually want speed mods on him or triple health mods or a variation of health and defense mods, but you want him to be the fastest base stat. Even, that is keeping in mind though, that in his kit, he gets a bonus 25% speed to start. He loses that whenever he gains taunt. So if your speed is like 250, 280, and say Nisa is 300, he will start ahead of her because that 25% is going to push him up there. So make sure you do some number crunching and get him fastest. However, I don't recommend using Poplu if you're running Nisa because reasons we'll get into in a second. After that though, you generally want Chirpa to go next, followed by Logre, Wicket, and Elder. Mod accordingly, um, but there is no like it doesn't have to stick to this because there is a lot of RNG in Ewoks through Chirpa's leadership. Whenever they attack using a basic 
uh, they will gain 20% turn meter, and they will be assisting random assists non-stop all the way through the battles, which means you cannot control the flow of them directly. You can do some ways to manipulate it, which I'll explain, but this is the base where you probably want to start. From there, we need to understand some things. Ewoks all want speed secondaries. It doesn't matter what the, the mod is, you want speed secondaries, lots of them. Again, normally Poplu would go first, but without him, like the idea was that Poplu goes first, calls Chirpa to assist, Chirpa calls the mass swarm attack to assist, everybody gets his turn matter, meter, uh, Ewok, Elder, hopefully, his basic triggers more turn meter. Wicked goes with his AOE. Everybody gets 50% more turn meter. Log Ray does his prophetic visions or whatever. Everybody gets another 20% turn meter. And you basically have a train to hopefully steamroll over somebody. But with Nisa, we don't need to go first anymore. We actually can absorb an incredible amount of damage, especially with the Nisacron, where they automatically revive. So you can allow the other teams to go first. Han Solo and CLS squads, they will fall fast to a well-modded Ewok squad, even with them all going first. So the new name of the game is Survive, Outlast the Enemy Barrage, and then go after them. In Territory Wars, as I said, Nisa will always go first, and you do not want critical chance mods on Nisa or Wicket, despite what the web tells you, seriously. So here's what you do want. Uh, as far as the arrow goes, you pretty much want straight speed down the board. Every Ewok is going to want speed. You could add a health mod to Poplu. You could probably add an offense mod to Nisa, um, and that would actually not be a bad idea. But for the most part, they all want speed. The arrows, you want a variety of stuff. Predominantly, uh, you want health. But on your attackers, you do want offense or critical damage, not critical chance. Seriously. On the circles, you want health all the way down. And then on the crosses, you want health, potency, or offense. I do strongly recommend tenacity though on Ewok Elder. His his base tenacity is quite low and you do want to avoid him getting like ability blocked, stunned, dazed, whatever you want. I mean, he's a turn meter driver who needs to be attacking relentlessly with his basic and uh, we'll look at why in just a second. So with Ewok Elder, um, well, let's start with Chirpa. Like I said, you want him to be the second fastest and generally either behind Poplu or behind Nisa, whoever you're starting with. So you do kind of want a speed mod there, but then you want a health set to back it up. Ewok Elder, you want two health mods and a tenacity. You could go with three health, and honestly, while I didn't put it here, you could go with three tenacities. That probably is not a bad idea. If you can push Ewok Elder's tenacity up around like the 150 range while maintaining a very, very, very high health secondary pool, that would be like ridiculously bonkers good. But uh, I don't go that route because I don't have enough tenacity mods to really focus there. Ewok Scout, no one uses, but he's the one holdout for critical chance. And then offense crit damage. Lagre, straight potency or potency and health. I mean, really, you want his potency push in the 160 range. Um, he gets more potency, I believe, through Nisa's kit. So um, that's why I back off on one set and put some more health in there. But you do want to max out as much potency as possible. You do want to be able to stun an enemy Wampa. You do want to be able to stun or daze, not stun, but daze an enemy nest and it can be done but you've got to push your potency up really high. Poplu just wants uh, health, just as much health as possible. If you're not running Nisa, speed is, is essential to make sure he goes first and he must go first. Nisa is a really, really odd character. Her kit is really, really diverse and you really can't go wrong with a variety of health, potency, offense, or tenacity. Seriously, you can do all kinds of crazy shenanigans with her. Wicket, you want critical damage and health. Yep, health, not crit chance. And then Tebow, you want straight potency no matter what. You just want insane amounts of potencies. Now, the secondaries you can read for yourself over here. I'm just going to reiterate, do not put protection primaries on any of your Ewoks. No, 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 no. And again, no crit chance on Nisa or Wicket. Okay, next up, 
why does this stuff, wh why, 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 why? Well, we're gonna look at some key components of a few of their kits. And you can see right off the bat, I've color coded these underlinings. If it is in yellow, it is referencing a speed advantage. So like Chirpa's basic, he's going to gain 35% turn meter if the enemy had 50% turn meter or more. Why does this matter? Because his leadership down below also says Ewok allies gain 20% turn meter whenever they uh, use a basic. So if he basics on an enemy with half turn meter, he's gonna get actually gain 55% turn meter. That makes him incredibly fast. I mean, if you modded him for say 200 speed and he basics one time, he's now punching at an effective rate of 410 speed. So you want to make sure that when he's attacking out of turn deliberately like a called assist or when he's basicing you want to target an enemy with high turn meter uh, already raised up. Um, secondly, you'll notice things are in green. Green is related to their health pool. Green, good, go, stay alive, right? He's got a special that says all allies recover 20% of their maximum health. Notice it does not say maximum protection. They also gain heal over time, which does not benefit protection. So if you mod him for protection, you have just invalidated a significant portion of this ability right here. So Chirpa is going to be fast. He's going to make the team fast and he's going to heal people based on their maximum health. Next up, we got Logre. Again, let's start with the yellow one. All allies gain 20% turn meter. This is again why you don't have to mod Ewoks anymore to be super duper fast because they're going to make a lot of their own turn meter. The more speed you put on them, of course, the better, but they're going to gain it. Again, in green, at the bottom, on a critical hit, that ally gains health up for two turns. Health up does not affect protection. It gives you 25 or 15% more health. I don't know which one it is. And then all Ewoks with health up recover 10% health. So again, if you mod for protection, you are invalidating that entire line right there basically. Now you'll notice there's a pink line that says inflict enemies with daze. Pink represents a, pot a potency requirement. So Lagre wants potency and then he wants health. Health and potency. Wicket. Ewok allies gain 10% turn meter for each critical hit scored. That's what he does on his AoE. So if he hits five enemies, all five critical hits, then you're gonna pump out 50% turn meter to the team. Now you may be saying, so why not critical chance? I didn't put it in here because there's limited space, but when he is called to assist and he will, he will gain critical chance up. And I believe on his basic, he also gains critical chance up. I believe it's the basic. Um, and so that alone is going to give him, I believe, an extra 25 or 50% critical chance. And then his pre-modded uh, relic crit chance rate is like 70 something percent. So. 70% plus crit chance up means he's gonna be hitting already at 100% crit chance. I mean, he's just gonna land crits. And then, so if you do have a couple crit chance secondaries on him, you're guaranteeing he's gonna be critting no matter what anyway. Now there's a green line down there for health. Anytime he um, critically hits an enemy, all he walks recover 4% health and 2% protection. Four versus 2%, which one would you rather recover? It doesn't sound like a lot, but again, remember AOE hits say five targets, that's 20% health recovery versus 10% protection recovery. Next up is Ewok Elder. I'm gonna read the green ones again. Uh, middle section, all allies recover uh, health equal to 30% of Ewok Elder's maximum health, not protection. Uh, with a 35% chance to revive a defeated ally at 15% health. Not protection. So if he revives somebody there, they don't get any protection, but they do get health. And then the bottom one, revive a random uh, defeated ally at 40% health. Again, no protection. So the more health they have, the more longevity they have, the more healing they're gonna be receiving from all so far, Chirpa, Lagre, Wicket, and Elder. Now on his basic, he's gonna has a 60% chance to gain 50% turn meter, but through Chirpa's leadership, that becomes 70%. So three out of five attacks, he's gonna gain 70% turn meter, making him super fast, which is why you wanna make sure he is never, ever uh, de uh, like debuffed, like a stun or a daze or whatever. So you want that tenacity on him. Because I mean, if he hits and gains 70% turn meter, he's just gonna go again and again and again. So the cooldowns on his cleanse and heal just start dropping super, super fast. Now. Finally, before we get to Nisa, we got dear old Poplu, who again, I don't really recommend, but 
Uh, he's got a he's got a, a galvanize here, which cleanses a, a target ally and himself, and then that ally assists gaining 10% turn meter. That's nice. But another green line here that whenever he gains a status effect, be it a buff or a debuff, he's going to gain 5% health and 5% protection. Now this is one of only two. I think maybe three call outs to protection in any of the eight Ewoks kits. So yes, you could argue that you could add protection here, but again, if he's defeated, Elder can't revive him with protection. Elder doesn't recover his protection. He doesn't get protection up from Lagre. He gets health up and he gets um, heal over time from Chirpa. So again, you want, you want, you want health. Now let's get to the bee's knees, Nisa herself. Her kit is just, just complicated. But let's start off with the green one at the top. Nisa gains 50% max health and defense. 50% max health. So again, don't mod for protection, mod for health, right? And then she's going to, other allies are gonna gain 20% max health, not protection. But they are gaining some potency, which is nice. Now we got another unlikely potency shout out here. Whenever an Ewok ally attacks out of turn, they're gonna inflict damage over time. This is way more devastating than people realize because she will attack three times every time an ally uses a special ability. If she's actually targeted, like say by Nisa or Poplu to assist, she can attack six times out of turn, applying six damage over time stacks. So if you're dancing around with Chirpa and Lagre and and you know whatever, you can actually cover the board and damage over time effects without killing anyone, such that they die on their own turn. It's like the Reva mission in uh, Rise of the Territory, Rise of the Empire. Um, all right, but then we go back to Yellow. Check it out. Another health call out here. Oh, Oh, sorry, yellow is speed, right? Whenever an enemy uses an ability, any ability, Nisa gains retribution. She's, she's going to attack out of turn, applying dots over time, and she's going to gain 5% turn meter, which is another reason she doesn't have to be so fast because she's going to gain turn meter every enemy turn. All right, back to green. She's going to grant all allies protection up, which is based on your health, not your protection. So the more health you have, the more protection up your allies gain. Now in Territory Wars, where she becomes just insane, it's not underlined, but Nisa has a 95% critical chance. Now that's in addition to 20% above, I do believe. It could be replacing it, but I don't think so. I don't know. Either way, it's either 95 or it's 115% bonus crit chance. Do not put crit chance on her, please. She's going to gain 10% maximum health, not protection. She's going to gain 10 speed for each Ewok ally. That includes herself, so that's 50 speed right off the bat. So, girl is fast. Next, whenever an Ewok ally gains a buff, she's going to recover 10% health and protection. Again, there's one of those rare protection statements, but it's also health too. Whenever an Ewok is an ally is inflicted with a debuff, they're going to recover 10% health. Again, not protection. So every debuff any ally receives, they gain 10% health, which makes them a lot harder to kill by teams that debuff the crap out of them. And they are going to gain 5% turn meter, which makes them even faster. It's just beautiful. Yet her kill it goes on whenever Nisa attacks her cooldowns are reduced by one so if she's targeted to assist or she just attacks at a turn and she attacks three times her cooldowns drop three times which means in territory wars with the Omicron she will spam the following special abilities every single turn and notice what they need potency and potency potency is the purple right and her danger Ewoks inflicts speed down that's a potency check and then the yub nub attack down below stun the enemy that's potency and remove a hundred percent turn meter that's potency what else is in there just some damage uh, but there is a green line all Ewok allies gain critical chance up who else needed critical chance wicket so if she goes first and she uses danger Ewoks which she could if you're manually controlling it otherwise she's more likely to use yubnap if it's the aoe or the a ai but if you're controlling it you probably want to start off with danger ewoks there's a couple reasons why not getting into it right now but let's just say you want to avoid causing some people to taunt so you target an assist you get uh, wicket critical chance up and then you inflict speed down on somebody and then you take the game from wherever it goes finally here 
uh, just some notable base stats that you need to take into consider when modding. So in Territory Wars with the Omicron where Nisa is really going to shine, she's going to start off with 170% base tenacity, which is good, 193% crit chance, which is amazing, and her speed base before modding is going to be 178 plus 50 if you have a full squad of Ewoks. So 228 starting speed. You add on like 140 speed to her, you're pushing 370 speed. So, and then you give her all those other benefits there. Even if you only give her 100 speed, she's starting out at what is that, 3, 328 speed? That's crazy. And then all the other turn meter mechanics in there. She's just insane. Lagre has so bad potency starting out. It's actually above average, but considering you need Lagre to, to knock out enemy nest, enemy um, wampas, you want as much as possible. So you want to push that up to the 150, 160. Heck, if you can get 170, that's great. Nisa gives you a bonus 20, but still push it up. Wicket has an incredibly high 93.5% critical chance rate at Relic 7. Enough said, don't put a crit chance on that. Ewok Scout, his crit chance if you're actually running him is quite poor at 55% and his kit really wants you to land critical chances. So do put it there. Chirpa has a really sad speed of 136 base. I mean, look at that, that's 42 below Nisa and yet you want him to go second. So you need to mod him for as much speed as possible. Final Ewok Elder, like we said, we do not want him to get dazed or stunned and his base tenacity at 49 is not great. Great. So crank that puppy up and his base health though is at 77,000 which is really really high for um, Well for a lot of characters that are that old a lot of newer characters are higher of course But you know for an older character like elder that's pretty good But you want to you know take advantage of all the health up health healing uh, bonus health from Nisa So you want to crank that up even higher Elder's base potency or uh, protection is like 40. So seriously, you want to get 16% on a mod of 77,000, or do you want to get 24% of a 30, 40? thousand health pool or protection pool like seriously just do some quick math and you see you net a lot more out of health okay so folks i really hope this has been helpful this is available on my discord here's the link and i also recently posted a graphic for 3v3 team guides um i don't i didn't even remember making it when i started this one but i did it just recently which is like uh, i'm losing my mind here but they're both available in my discord i have a, a, a channel just called um, infographs so feel free to check it out and download these and use them and spread them around and maximize the benefit on your Ewoks all right I hope this was helpful if so you know what to do please push the like push the subscribe tell your friends um, and um, tell me what you think in the comments and I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions otherwise I will catch you all later on the holotables bye bye